Hey friends, Greg here with the Pennywise guys. I'm going to show you how to do the final hookups on the compressor unit on this mini split system. And uh, I built the custom framing. You can check out a video how to do that. The inside evaporator unit and the cup cabinetry work, check out those videos. On this video, we're going to concentrate on how to do the, the installation and final hookups on the compressor unit and get it running. So let's get started. All right, I want to show you how you can pressurize and check for leaks on your newly installed mini split system. And I've got a cheaper way to do it, and let me show you how. Basically, the best way to check for leaks is to pressurize the system. Most AC contractors will use nitrogen gas. Pressurize the lines, the line set to 150 pounds. You can pressurize the system and use liquid soap, dish soap in water. It works well, or those bubbles you can get at the Dollar Tree. But if you don't have nitrogen gas, what do you do? All right, I got this hooked up to my MIG welder CO2 tank. It goes up to 80 pounds pressure. It's enough to test the uh, lines to see if there's any leak with a bubble test. And it's a lot cheaper than nitrogen. If you don't have uh, any AC uh, friend that, that has nitrogen tank, but you have a friend that has a MIG welder, then that MIG welder is going to have a CO2 tank. CO2 gas is pretty cheap and if you want to and just give them a few bucks to use a little bit of gas to test your system, what I did is I took 5 16 hose, 20 foot length of hose is like five bucks, and a, um, a clamp, a hose clamp here on this end and on the other end I'll show you how I connected that and tighten it really tight pressure check it with the bubbles to see if uh, the, the the line is leaking get it really tight it doesn't leak uh, turn your regulator all the way up so it goes to 80 pounds and you can check your your system I have no problem using this on a new system where you haven't charged the lines yet the the, uh, the compressor unit has the charge built into the tank or to into the unit and um, so you're, you're having no problem having a line set being tested with CO2 gas. It's inert gas. And uh, as soon as you get a pressure check and bubbled and you evacuate it out, like I'll show you, and it's good to go. Once you charge it and you have a refrigerant in the system and you need to check your lines down the road and you have residual oils and refrigerant, you might rethink this strategy, but I've used it on that systems. I have had no problems. I've had some some guys say no you shouldn't do it some guys say it's okay but uh, there is no problem on a new system where you haven't charged the lines yet they're perfectly dry and when you evacuate that gas out there's no residual gas in the system at all it doesn't absorb into the oil because there's no oil in the lines so it's uh, okay to test it that way and then once you know you have no leaks you can uh, what with the bubble test then you can evacuate it uh, get everything vacuumed out and then charge it and it should be fine. The cost is a tremendous savings over using nitrogen gas. So that's just an option for you and that's what I do. It works well. I took the adapter that I have that goes from quarter inch fitting to 5 16 because the 5 16 is what goes on the manifold here. Okay. And so there's adapters that, that, that go from the, the lines on the gauge set to from quarter inch to 5 16 So I took that 5 16 adapter, took a hacksaw blade, cut it off right there, and then I went ahead and put a deburred it and got rid of the burr and put the vinyl hose on, on there with the hose clamp. It currently is pressurized. And like I showed you, you just mix up a bottle of dish soap in water a lot of dish soap i'd say about three or four ounces and a half a bottle of water and squirt all around the fittings and watch for bubbles you'll see that right here my vacuum line or that vac that line that i added is bubbling up just a little bit and that's what you'll see if you will have a leak in your lines okay so you do here around the manifold and that, that's just to show you, see the bubbles bubbling there? That's what you don't want to see 
bubble up around your line set. You do this inside and outside, okay? And if you have a problem, get it fixed. And um, if you, you know, if the, line, the flare is not flared right, you'll know. If the seal is not working, you'll know. Go ahead and cut it back, re-flare it, try it again. And that's why I always leave at least a foot extra of material of lines. That way, if you have a problem, you can cut cut the line back, reflare it, put the nut back there, reflare it, and try it again. And do that until you don't see any bubbles on those line sets. And what I did is I, I'll, I'll leave this uh, pressurized at 75 pounds for an hour or two and see how fast it drops. I know it's gonna drop just a little bit with this slight seepage right here, but if it doesn't drop more than a pound, uh, you know, then in, in a couple hours that I, and I don't get any bubbles on the inside unit as well as here, then you're good to go. And then we'll go ahead and evacuate it. Uh, I went ahead and removed the vinyl hose off of here. It depressurized on the hose side. I wanna just make sure that there's still good pressure inside so take a screwdriver and push in the straighter valve here. So that was a good sign that it, we, we actually had pressure in the system because we're checking the checking for leaks. Because sometimes a, a straighter valve will, will be defective and you don't get the, the um, pressure in the system. So I just want to verify that we did, yes, get pressure in the system. So when we checked it, we're checking for leaks and actually have a pressurized system. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and finger tight the line on here. So we have uh, my red line goes to the vacuum pump, blue line goes to the unit. These vacuum pumps, you can rent them. It's not even a rental, it's a loan a tool. You pay a deposit, a $200 deposit at AutoZone, or you can go to uh, Craig and O'Reilly's, they have them as well. Uh, for almost a couple hundred bucks for a uh, deposit fee. You can use the pump and then when you're done return it and get your money back. So it, it is a free uh, use of a vacuum pump. So I got that hook up. I'm going to go ahead and switch on the vacuum pump. Okay. Come over here and open. And do this with one hand. There we go. Open the this side and let that draw down. It's going to have to is the what we're going to try to do is get this drawn down ideally 90 to 29 um, inch uh, of vacuum 29 inches of vacuum would be the ideal but um, oh okay I noticed there was a problem I didn't have this line tightened down okay now that I have that tight that's tight now I come back over here and you see that the, the vacuum's going down. I found on these pumps that they're kind of abused. You may get one that doesn't even work. So what I do is I take my gauge set in with my blue hose hooked up and I ask them, can I go ahead and plug this unit in at the store and check to see what the, uh, the vacuum is on it. And you'll find some that don't even work at all. They don't check them when they come back. They just loan them out to somebody else. So. It's, uh, and then a lot of times you'll find one that will only give you maybe 20, 25 inches of vacuum. Okay, this one so far is around 1920. And if you're not at 29, you you possibly have a chance of having a slight bit of moisture left over in the lines. But this unit has a dryer inside that will accumulate any moisture and not cause any problem. So even at uh, 20, 25 inches, you're going to get the majority of the moisture out, especially if the system hasn't been open that long. You know, if it sits here open for weeks, then you're going to have, in a hot, humid day, you're going to have more, a lot of moisture in the lines. These lines are new. It hasn't been, it's been beautiful um, weather, very, very little humidity. So I'm confident that even if this unit is not going to suck it down uh, to 27 to 29 inches, inches um, then we are good to go to go ahead and charge it. Okay, I'm gonna let that run a little bit. I'm gonna uh, show you. I'm gonna put a link to all the equipment, the tubing cutter, the, the uh, flaring tool, and the torque wrench. I'll put all the information below. 
This pack of uh, adapters, they came in a pack of four, two straight and two angled adapters. I only needed one. The vacuum pump is still running. It's been going for almost an hour and it's still pulling a good vacuum. Went ahead and hooked up the electrical. I took a uh, 25 foot length of 12-3 extension cord, cut the end off. I'm gonna plug the other end into the uh, outlet inside the trailer that we think we can use the circuit and use that 10-3 uh, extension cord and go ahead and uh, hook up the, uh, the control wires, the one, two, three, the black, red, white, green goes to ground and then we have line one, or actually line and neutral. So the red goes to line, white goes to neutral. I'll put that cover on later with some cord restraints. Right now we're gonna go ahead and put a charge in it. Just a slight charge. We're gonna just put a little bit of charge in after I turn the um, the vacuum pump off. Okay, we're gonna pull this line real quick. Okay, now that, sh that Schrader valve is closed. And I'm gonna go ahead and with a Allen wrench, we're gonna go ahead and open it up just a little bit. Okay, that is tight. There we go. Just a little bit. I put a little bit of gas pressure in there, close it off. I'm gonna check for leaks again, inside and outside. Okay, and uh, we're gonna just bubble it here, or, or check for bubbles here, check for bubbles there. Now that we've got a little bit of refrigerant in the system, and I'll check it on the inside as well. And then if no leaks, then we'll put the rest of the charge in and we're ready to go. All right, the inside checked out good. We're gonna check the outside here. I'm gonna spray all around the fittings and the Schrader valve. Check to make sure that that is not leaking. I've had those leak before. So far, so good. I don't see any bubbles. So we're ready to go. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just open this up all the way slowly here. All the way until it stops. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and open up the other line all the way until it stops. Okay, I'm gonna check it one more time. Check the, the fittings there. Looks good, looks good. I don't see any bubbles, any leaks anywhere. I'm gonna check again on the inside, but the system is charged and we should be able to get it going here. Okay. And we'll button it all up and I'll show you the end results. All right, we're all completed. It's working great. Love the results. Let me show you some details here of the finished work. All the electrical is all buttoned up, the covers put on. And when I add that, I added a one and a half inch wire loom covering over the line set. Reason being, the foam deteriorates in the sun and falls apart. So this cover will protect that from happening and it just looks really nice. Also a side note, you see that coil of yellow extension cord? I just tucked that underneath there for right now to see if the circuit that we plugged into, which was a 15 amp um, outlet, so far working great, hasn't tripped a breaker. If it has a problem in the heat of the summer, when it has a little more demand on it, then I have that 25 foot extension cord that I can stretch underneath the trailer and tie it into electrical panel and giving it its own 20 amp circuit. For right now, we'll just leave it there until we know. And we'll know later this summer if that 15 amp is gonna work. So we love the results and I think it's a great way to save money. The efficiency is great. I, I can't believe in heating and air conditioning mode that cools this trader down is running less than a 15 amp circuit can handle. So we're probably looking at about 10 amps of energy being used to heat and cool this trailer. So I hope this inspires you to do this on your own trailer and you guys have a blessed day. I pray that you are blessed, that you know him who is the author of life.